Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Citizen Night Sky from Valparaiso. My name is Sebastián Ramírez Alegría. I work at the Centro de Astronomía in Universidad de Antofagasta, north of Chile. And this talk is part of the third IAU show workshop on astronomy for education. The first thing I'd like to share with you is this relation that exists between uh, astronomy and, and Chile. And really the, the main deal part is, is the, the presence of the Atacama Desert. A uh, very, very dry desert, one of the driest in the, in the world, um, that is limited by by both uh, uh, the the Andes in the in the east part and the, the Cordillera de la Costa in the west part. Uh, both mountain chains uh, block uh, the clouds; they they rain uh, outside of this this uh, central region, and that's why we have that's why we have a, a very very dry. Um, section of the of the country. And Tofagasta is located right here and you can see the, the brown part uh, as the as the desert. And then as you move to the south of, of the country, the, the mountains diminish their, their height and the rain can enter to the to the continent and and, and precipitate. And the, the other cluster of telescopes uh, is around this area where you can find La Silla, Tololo, uh, Las Campanas. And here you have a, a Paranal, DLT, and, and Elma. Uh, so you have in, in this country conditions that favor the construction of super B observatories, uh, projects from different countries and associations of, of countries uh, has decided to, to, to install the, this, this project in, in Chile. And the presence of, of these uh, extraordinary laboratories uh, boosts both the astrophysical research in, in universities, and the presence of, of astro, ast astronomers, professional astronomers in, in the country, and, and help uh, to, to, to ex spread ideas, con astronomical concept in, through astronomical outreach. Um, uh, this is something that has happened in the in the last uh, 20, 30 years and using different media, uh, uh, television, radio, uh, newspapers, and books. And that's why uh, now it's, it's relatively easy to start a, 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 an outreach talk in Chile about, I don't know, star clusters or, or galaxy uh, without having to, to explain that a galaxy is a collection of stars. There are some basic common com, uh, concepts are common in in the Chilean population, and that is not not something common in in other countries in the in the region uh, in Latin America, and I have realized that with with my experience during during the years, uh, but also with having this this astronomical concept uh, spread another idea that to observe the sky to observe the skies in a in a professional way. Uh, everybody needs a telescope, and, and and that's crazy because first of all, the, the telescope does not give you a large uh, large field of view when you can have images such as this. The, the telescope allows you to go at very narrow sections of the sky, and and second, not everybody needs a telescope uh, because not everybody has the, the time to to learn how to use it. I don't have telescopes at home. And that is something that normally uh, I included the answer when someone asked me where could they buy a telescope or what telescope should they buy. Um, so during the 2016, when I, uh, I started working as a postdoctoral researcher in Valparaiso, um, I was kind of frustrated after uh, the, the, the talks having to explain why the people does not need a telescope. Why? Why the the a small child does not need the, a telescope, or why the, the, the parents should not buy a, a, a telescope, especially in Valparaiso. That Valparaiso is a is a city uh, with a, a strong light pollution, not as much as an, an Santiago, but uh, you're in the in the middle of a city with hills and with lights coming from from every direction. Uh, and it's not a good place to, to observe the sky using uh, a telescope. On the other part, uh, Valparaiso is a, is a very rich, uh, culturally speaking, city. It was a, a main Pacific port uh, by the, the uh, early 20th century. 
it was the first port that the ships uh, reached after crossing Cape of, of Horns. And because this, this uh, condition of port, it received a lot of, of migrants with different traditions, with different ideas, with different cultures and food, and it mixed it all together. Um, and many first Chilean things happened in, in Valparaiso. The first football club, the first firehouse, uh, the first newspaper, which is also the, the oldest newspapers uh, written in, in Spanish that is still in circulation, uh, was created in, in Valparaiso. And also the first astronomical observations in Chile happened in Valparaiso. One of the hills, the Cordillera Hill, um, John Watt in 1843 pointed the telescope to, to a comet. And that is something that, that happened in, in, this, in this port. And all this history has emerged with the migrant and created uh, a particular spirit, uh, a spirit of exploration, of exploration of, of science and exploration of knowledge. And I found that that spirit in, in a cafe. Uh, I was invited by, by some, well, later friends that uh, uh, found in, in this cafe called Cafe Trabalengua, uh, tongue twist in cafe in, in English. And they offered me to participate in a, in a series of talks, of workshop, including some talks on mathematics, on knitting, and on bread making, and where well, there I was with, with astronomy. And the name of that, that talk was uh, Cielo Aujo Esnudo, Naked Eye Sky. Um, here, the left part of the, of the slide, you may see the, the description in, in Spanish. Um, but the, the main idea is first that the, the talks were open to anyone who wants to participate. Uh, that the idea is to first recognize the knowledge that each and every one of us uh, has about the, the night sky to compare this idea, to compare this, this knowledge and to complement with new one and then to practice uh, observing the, the sky at night. And the theoretical part included a recognition of main objects in the night sky, plus a comprehension of the physical explanation for this object difference, trying to, to understand why some stars are brighter than others or why some stars are red in, in, or others are blue. And, and then the practical part was to, to take all this idea, all this discussion, go to the, to the city and try to observe the, the sky at night using a finding chart and just our eyes and try to connect what we discuss what, with what we are, are watching. So the main ideas was first to uh, understand that our first experience of the night sky was just using our eyes and that we can observe different objects in the sky. Um, I support myself with, it, with this image when we can see, for example, the, the, uh, some galaxies, the Milky Way and the larger Mag Magellanic Cloud and small Magellanic Clouds, and also some planets. And these are objects that are easy to spot in the, in the, the sky by night in, the, in, in Chile. These objects may change in a daily, a weekly, a monthly, or yearly frequency. Uh, everything we know from the sky, or almost everything, because we have now gravitational waves and uh, and well cosmic uh, cosmic particles uh, or high energy particles, was understood just from the light that we receive from the from the objects, and from the light we complement with the physics and we understand the what is happening in the objects, and also that the astronomical scales may be overwhelming, and to support that idea, well, you have uh, the separations of the objects in the solar system compared with the sizes of the objects. And the, the, the difference in sizes is, is notorious, also the separations and trying to understand that between uh, every name, there's nothing in the middle, it's mostly empty. And also that at the same time, uh, we, cannot, we cannot compare both the scales if I put the size of the, the, the sun on the same scale as the separation between the planets is not going to be possible to, to observe the, the objects. And the, the challenge of putting all the scales together into something graphic was also discussed in the, in the, in the talks. And well, I show you, I share with you some images of the, of the uh, night sky session. And as you may see, everybody's happy trying to spot objects, even 
or, or fighting with the with the night pollution, light pollution that's part of the of serving in the middle of the city, and using the the finding chart uh, and also not 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 just using the finding chart from a moment, but also understanding that uh, the finding chart changes from night to night. If I want to observe in March, I have to look for uh, a finding chart for for that night, and and it's also uh, the idea that the, the sky changes from day to day. And, and some of the participants share with me uh, their experience with the, with the sky. Uh, one of them was a, a musician. He, he found this, this web page of uh, another musician that it's a project when they, he mixes uh, the frequency or the, the orbital parameters of the, of the planets in the solar uh, system. And, and include uh, sounds so you can hear uh, as, the, as the planet passes through a point, it makes a, a note and sounds something as, a, as music. Uh, so what happened after February 2016? Uh, well, new workshop on the, on the cafe happened uh, with a diversity of topics, no astronomical one. Some collaborations occur with a, with a couple of participants, uh, very enriching uh, collaborations. Later in 2017, I moved to Antofagasta and the next year the Café de la Lengua closed, uh, but all participants were very happy to see the sky at night uh, with new eyes and the support of just a finding chart, a very low cost uh, element to, to explore the, the, the sky. Thanks for listening. I'm happy to receive comments. That is my email and we can stay and talk and discuss in the, the end of the session. Thank you.